brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Hello and a very warm welcome to Weigh In on this Monday morning. We're going to get through our domestic action to start with before we get through a massive day two of the championships in Australia. And then, of course, wrapping up the show with something a little bit more lighthearted. Welcome back, my co-host and Michael Guerin. Michael, you've rung everybody. You've got lots of info to share with us later on. What a great weekend of racing it was, Em. Um, one of the great rides of all time coming out of Sydney. We're lucky enough to have Nash Rawala joining us on the show this morning to talk about how he won the Queen Elizabeth. Some really cool racing out of Rickerton. An amazing story about the Grand National. And I tell you what, Em, I've had a magical week. I was in Sydney and I spent a lot of the week with some of the New Zealand trainers and some of the agents. A free education. Free education in horsemanship. Um, it's incredible how much talent we have in that area in New Zealand. So hopefully I've come home learning a bit more, but it was great to have their company last week. And one of the great assets of the industry, as you know better than me, is the, the standard of our horse people. So yep, really, uh, really interesting times over there. Couldn't stay for the second day of the championships, but would have loved to have been there because... Mm. Some pretty incredible racing. Yes, yeah, some incredible scenes coming out of uh, Randwick on Saturday. We'll get to that later on. We'll start with our New Zealand action. And, of course, it's Rickerton that heads our show this week. The listed NZB insurance stakes. Bell eases into the clear from Junebug. Just maybe he's running on. And then came Champagne's on me. Unusual Countess leads at a length. Bell of the Ball out wide of Reputabel starting to run on. It's Unusual Countess. Reputabel's a length away, revving up from Bell of the Ball. Reputabel coming after Unusual Countess. Then Bell of the Ball and Divine Sather from Bergy. But it's Reputabel. She keeps winning. Reputabel wins the insurance stakes and beats home. Unusual Countess and Divine Sever, I think. Well, that was the fourth win in succession for Reputabel. A, a really, really nice uh, effort by the horse. Tough, Michael, tough effort, and she's showing her class. Yeah, hard to believe, you know, she, she's won four on the bounce and every time's actually looked easier. Mm. Now, the big question next, and we're going to put that to Michael Pittman. Michael will join us very shortly after he and Matthew trained three on the day. Um, is whether she can go to 2,000 metres, because the War Step Stakes is next up down there. It's 2,000 metres. And she's from a sprinting family. She's a half to Florence Jean, who was a very fast horse, and a horse in Morse code, who was an open-class sprinter. But that's obviously a different type of thing to stepping up to 2,000. So maybe they, they'll have a go. I mean, Pity's someone who does tend to have a go with his horses, but I thought a high-class performance, um, if she can get that extra black type in the War Step, a really big help. There was a school of thought, Emily, before the race that she hadn't been beating much. And that may not have been the strongest three-year-old fillies race of the year, but she fairly can spank them and she's just getting better and better and better. Mm, and I know uh, they've indicated that the War Step is obviously a race that a tissue has uh, previously won and it can be nice, quite a nice uh, springboard towards Australia. And I, I know that's sort of uh, in the mix for them, isn't it? I understand we, we have been trying Michael Pittman, but... Uh, He's no, working. No, he obviously exactly, works a lot. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, it, it might be nice to springboard to some of those uh, races in Australia. Well, it's really easy to watch South Island form and go, well, is, what's that going to mean? You know, could you take that type of horse to Australia. Let's not forget, a, a year and a half ago, Matchmaker was, was racing mm. in races not dissimilar to this down there. As you mentioned, a tissue went from these races to being one of the favourites for the Epsom way back in the spring. So uh, I think the form shouldn't be underestimated. If they go to the war step, that gives them options to maybe even go to Queensland mm. or whether they put her away and come back with the next season. With a three-year-old filly in form, it would be tempting to go. Yeah, it would. Because a lot yeah. of three-year-olds, are a lot of, a lot of you know, New Zealanders are heading to Queensland. They had three for the day, copy that, and he's really also winning for Team Pitt. And so recently they passed, and we were going to talk to Michael about that, but of course he's working in the stables today, so we apologise for not being able to bring him to you. Um, recently he passed 2,000 wins. Mm. So that's between all forms of partnerships that Pittman Racing's had. I think he would like to get to 2,000 wins on his own in New Zealand, and then I keep asking him, are you ever going to retire? But I've got a funny feeling he's not, Emily. So yeah. I think those, um, not so much those colours, but the Pittman colours, the red and the white, which matches your top, will be around for some time to come. Yeah, they will. And a big nod to Tina Komenyagi as well, who's been riding in fantastic uh, form there uh, down south. Let's move you along to race eight, which was the Avon City Ford Easter Cup. And this one was another very tough win by Irish Girl. 
rear. Seriously, split the cutter. Got away three lengths in the Easter Cup. Irish Girl trying to go with him from feeling the power. Running on Harborside. Seriously, he's lifting. He's two and a half in front from Irish Girl. Harborside deepers into the clear from Whale Song late. Beneficial starting to run on wider out. Seriously, a length in front. Irish Girl. Beneficial's absolutely flying. It's seriously in front from Irish Girl. Who's got it? Irish Girl won the Easter Cup. What a thrilling finish. Irish Girl to beat Sirius. Michael, I sort of watched this with admiration because Irish Girl was just, uh, I wouldn't say floundering, but plugging away is maybe the best way to describe it. But through that plugging away, she was able to uh, peg back uh, seriously and uh, take the win. And, and a really well deserved. And, and a horse that's just in fantastic form. It just loves the South Island. She's had five starts in the South Island. She's, run, she's won four of them. And she ran second in the Canterbury Breeders the other time to actually a horse who's her auntie mm. uh, in Amy's Jewel. So it, it's a remarkable story. You sort of think with Kenny Ray and Krista Tahura Williams, what it is leave her there all the time. Mm. But of course, there's more money here in the north. The big question now is, is can she cop 2,000 metres? She's been really good at the mile there. And as you said, she looked a bit flat-footed. So she's racing like 2,000 might be in her window. Um, Kenny said last night, we'll, we'll never crack. Mm. Because... He thinks if she can win at 2,000 or be competitive at 2,000, he wants to take her to Queensland for the carnival, but at the back end of the carnival, he's, he's not going to chuck him the Dooming Cup. He's, he's not getting carried away. But he realises that the back end of the carnival, any Australian black type him, is worth a fortune yeah. for a horse like her because she's got her New Zealand black type now a couple of times. 2,000 metres, I, I wouldn't have thought was her go, but as you said, she was floundering. She found mm. the line really well. Second horse was excellent, beneficial. And I think seriously showed that he's clearly a different horse when he's up against the rail. He's a lot happier on the aluminium. But she's one of those lovely stories, a horse who's won seven races, over 200 grand, wants to be a racehorse, mm. wants to be there. So, um, yeah, Kenny's keen to go to Queensland, as I'm sure lots of New Zealanders will be now that the borders are open. Yeah, great horse for connections, isn't she, Irish girl? Race number three was the Tom Topless Memorial Sprint. It was over the 1,000 metres, a dash to the line, and Chili Philly came out on top. Round the corner at the 400, Chili Philly, a half a length on Ocean Point. Two lengths away, Scarfy. Amber Echo descending down the outside. Chili Philly leads. Amber Echo's coming from Ocean Point in Kaimar War. Still Chili Philly, too clear. Kaimar War getting into his work with Amber Echo and Star Scarfy. Chili Philly fighting. Kaimar War's coming. They hit the line. Hit Bobber. It's a photo. Chili Philly or Kaimar War. Third Thrilling and finish, and wasn't it, when you look at the photo there? Chili Philly, though, getting the eventual nod. The favourite saluting. And Michael, past six runs, finished first or second in every start. So uh, another win to the resume is very well deserved. Nice win for Lisa Royal Press as well. I think she's one of those horses who sort of snuck under everybody's radar. This is an open class sprint, which in the South Island is no small deal, as we know, because they have some very good open class sprinters. And she's just turned up sort of forgotten mm. after her form of last campaign. She's also a good indication for people who have a horse who go poorly in its first start. She ran ninth of 11 in her first start at massive odds. Yeah. And you would have thought, where's this going to end up? Yeah. But she's ended up in open class. The question now for Ross Beckett, um, who had two wins on the day, is where does he go next with her? Because that was only 1,000 and mm. she was pretty tight on the line. Does it extend out to, at the next meeting, there's a, a decent 1,200. Then there's, I think there's a 1,400. The Great Easter Stakes, I think it's called. So that's her chance of black type, because she's a filly, a filly or a mare now, so black type's crucial for her. Yeah. Uh, and if he doesn't get it now, it's a lot harder to get in the spring. So mm. whether she extends out to 1,400 will be interesting for her. Um, yeah, look, hell of a nice horse. I, I think the track there was just OK for her. She had concussion plates on, so I wouldn't be surprised if the best versions of her are going to be once the rain returns, because she was really good on wet tracks last year. So maybe they have the option to go deeper into the winter. I'm just not sure how much she does to achieve out of that unless you can get some black type. But wins are wins, and she was home in 32.8 there for the last 600. So she's clearly not just a one-hit wonder horse. That's seven wins, uh, seven starts, four wins, two placings, and that odd ninth. Yeah, on debut. Exactly right. And uh, as we get you along to race number four, that'll be the Hornby Club Founders Cup. This one was over the 2,000 metres. An original gangster, the winner. 
Frankie the Fox sticking to the inside, and Savazar's got nowhere to go. Original Gangster putting it to Summer Festival. Let's bring it on onto the scene quickly. So too, Bully Boy. Savazar now into the clear wider out. Original Gangster with his nose in front from Summer Festival, who's in for the fight. Then let's bring it on. Original Gangster in Summer Festival. Stride for stride inside the 50. Original Gangster with his nose in front. He's so tough. Original Gangster won it. Beat home, Summer Festival. Let's bring Lovely win by yeah, Original Gangster. And you could see Carly Williams pretty satisfied with the effort. It was a mid-race move, wasn't it? Uh, just put him off speed. was sort of midfield and came around, let him settle just off speed. And him at Summer Festival went to war and he came out on top. Yeah, I thought it very brave. Uh, I spoke to Lynn Prendergast last night and she said, look, after that, we're so thrilled with him. We've really got to go to the Canterbury Gold Cup. That's next time up. It's over 2,000 metres. So that's the race where Irish Girl is also going to go in. It's 100k mm. and it's wait for race. They won it a couple of years ago with Who Deals Wins. So they'll probably go there again, even if maybe he's not a true wait for age type horse. Could be a couple of northerners coming down for that. But he deserves it. I mean, he deserves yeah. to be there. It's his home track. Why well, wouldn't you have a crack? Um, he's had seven wins for 181 grand now. So... We, we spoke to people on the show about two months ago when Lynn won with this horse mm. about her remarkable last couple of years. Obviously, she, she lost her husband, Tony, who was a much-loved part of the racing industry. And then that same week a couple of years ago, the house tragically burnt down. Well, yeah. the good news is, I rang Lynn last night. She was in the new house. Embarrassingly watching Married at First Sight, she admitted that to oh, me. Oh, that's a woman after my own heart. <laughs> oh, you, don't tell me you're one of them too. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, God, they're Absolutely. everywhere. Absolutely. That's you Great and Lynn. That's television. two girls in the last 24 hours I've got who've been watching um, Married at First Sight. And she said, look, in the new house, it, it's great. I'm loving it. So it's a story which, while she misses Tony terribly, is, is having some nice moments at the, at the moment. And she's enjoying racing this horse with a lot of harness racing friends actually a lot of the harness racing people mm. are in this horse and she said they came in for dinner tonight we had a great time and then sadly watched married at first sight so but she's enjoying the horse and he'll be off to the canterbury gold cup to take on irish girl next time out that's in two weeks as this this circuit of ricketon through autumn continues and i think it's a wonderful win mm. it, it gives the locals a real chance and it gives northerners who want to go down maybe looking for easier black type, although yeah. this time last year Bowden was down there, so it's not that easy. It, it gives them a chance to meet up. I think it's a really cool thing we have going through autumn there for Tim Mills and the Ricketon Club. Yeah, something for everybody, isn't there? Let's mix it up because we get you to Rotorua now, which was our other domestic meeting on Saturday. And we start with the, one of the features, which was, of course, the laser electrical open handicap over the 1,400 metres. And there was a horse who hadn't been in the winner's enclosure for a long time who got up and saluted. Dan Tall Osaka, out wide as Sheriff, and with them also Al Coolio, and behind these Tannehill at the 150 on the rocks made the lead. Here's Thunder coming after you strongly on the rocks with a very good kick. Can he get back in? to the winner's circle today. Yeah, you better believe it. The former group one stars back in winning action. On the Rocks won it second over Thunder, third at the line photos. Well, On the Rocks hadn't won since the 2nd of January 2020 at Tauranga, Michael. Uh, Maria Sanson doing the ride. Just, I wondered, allowed to run along and just find his own way and, and make up his own mind, he's able, been able to be very effective. I, I think Maria was the key because the claim got him down to 52 kgs. He's, he's a strong enough horse that 52 kgs would feel like nothing. Mm. Um, I think being on the speed at Rotorua is the place to be. But, look, it's easy to forget that On The Rocks won the Herbie Dyke. Yeah, I mean, I know. It's a serious horse race. Yeah. God, that feels like a long time ago. And he won the Evandale Goodies yep. um, leading into the derby. So he's been a very good horse. And I think sometimes when they, they're in the grind of Group 1, it just gets so hard and you're not getting any kills, it's really easy to forget how to win or... I'm not saying he doesn't dig in, but I'm not. It's just so hard, even if you do dig in, to run past those horses. Lightweight Maria rode him well. Lots of things worked out there together, and maybe that's the key to it. Maybe the key to him trying to find him some easy kills to get his confidence back. Again, very hard horse to place from now on because there's yeah. not that many races heading forward for him, and it'd be a real stretch to take him to Australia, for sure. where the horses are probably pretty good over there. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people are happy to see him back. And just going back to our previous conversation. For, for the, the men watching the show, you told us that Opie likes watching Married at First Sight too. Oh, are we really? Are we going back here, Michael? He does. Is, he does. is that true? It's New Zealand's top jockey likes watching Married at First Sight. Yes, very good TV it is. You should try it. I, 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 Your I, wife watches I, I, I it, I respect, and you should sit down and give it a go. See I if respect you enjoy that Opie until this happened. This is disappointing. <laughs>
It's just dis- IP, I IP, think, you've just I will guarantee happy. you, Michael, there's a lot of men out there who are enjoying Married at First Sight as well. Let me give you the tip. We're not all as busy as you. OP, OP, OP. <laughs> Race, times. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on rapidly. Race number one at uh, Rotorua was an event for the three-year-olds. It was a short-priced favourite who got rolled by Stars and Cream. Homeward bound as they turn for home, 2.50 to go. Stars and Cream tackled by La Bella Beals. And they drew clear by two. And behind them, Rekindled Express, followed in by Ziegfeld. Wider out, Billy Bunter. It's La Bella Beals, Stars and Cream. Billy Bunter out wide. La Bella Beals just in front. Stars and Cream trying hard on the inside and came at it right on the line to make it very interesting to give, it, give you the tip. You know, George Simon summed it up perfectly, didn't he? Very interesting. It was right down to the wire and Stars and Cream just got the nod when it matters. No doubt, Michael, much to punter's horror. You could not have enough on the fave who was on the outside of the marsh colours at the 200. You just could not have enough on. And I'm not sure whether it's just pulled up because it's still learning or whether the other horse has been really good or a combination of both. But the winner is another one by Toomey Loose. And this... I don't mean to rave on about Toomey Loose, but the last six weeks has been remarkable. Phenomenal, yeah. It's been, like, six weeks ago, I'll be honest with you, if most people said to you, I'm buying you a Toomey Loose at the sales, you'd be like, well, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. Now, I'd be like, oh, cool, I'll have one of those. Yeah. They're everywhere. Winning in Australia, had two wins, I think, on Friday or Saturday in Australia, with three-year-olds, Verbeck won. Obviously, the group won at Ellerslie. Um, I Ancient think it, girl was Mooney Valley, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think a lot of people wanted him to be a good stallion. And obviously Windsor Park did and Lindsay de Sosa. But he was such a good racehorse, wasn't he? You I, forget what he was able to do. You know, a Futurity, horse. Emirates, it was uh, those top line sprint races. A, a true carnival horse mm. at Fording and 1600, which New Zealand doesn't have a lot of. So, gee, it's been a turnaround. Mm. And I, I'm thrilled for everybody involved and thrilled for the horse because he's such a wonderful horse. But... I, I spent a lot of time leading up to the Caracas sales talking to different agents and trainers and not many of them were saying to me, I can't wait to get another two me loose. And that's not being rude. They were just, they wanted proof. Yeah. Well, now the proof just keeps turning up to the point where that word there six weeks ago would have had people going, oh, wow, that's cool. Two me loose is turning a corner. Now it's like, okay. Another two me loose, yeah. It's just, I I can't remember a New Zealand stallion who was at that lower end of the market, because I think he was standing at $15,000, mm. turning it around that quickly in a six-week period. So I'm thrilled for them. Well, good luck to them all, and um, pretty good horse, that, too. Like, that's a good form race. So I think that'll be very strong heading through the next four to six weeks. Yep, exactly right. And just before we leave uh, Rotorua, I just wanted to give a special nod as well to Jim Chung, who had his first winner aboard the Tim and Margaret Carter-trained Show Courage, just a second race day ride, and it was uh, resulted in a win, so well done to you. Last race of the day, but uh, got the money, so really, really good. Well done to you, Jim Chung. How are you finding the new track thing? Because I find when it comes up a soft five... Confusing. I find yeah. it confusing, <laughs> because my mind soft goes, OK, that's getting close to heavy. I know I'll get used to it eventually, and I know it's in Australia that way, but five and soft don't sound like the same thing I almost to need, in brackets, the new, what it used yeah. to be. You know, yep. NZ, it, it, uh, it this is, is what it is tricky. now, this is what it used to be. Or a little uh, index. I think it. we'll catch on, but for some reason, I think in my mind, five felt like it was quite a good track, and soft sounds like it's not. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's really important. I think trackside's got a really good role to play in this, is after the first race, even if it's the commentator. After the first race, those jockey reports are crucial. When I'm betting, like the other day, there, I want to hear about someone who rode in the first race, what yeah. the track's like. So I think it's something maybe either if NZTR did a love racing or whoever, yeah. or e- even the Stipe Henry Stewards who are on Twitter to give instantaneous information. I, I'm a little bit confused by it, and I don't want punters being confused because I don't think they punt with confidence when they are. Yeah, OK, very good. Our Pune w- resulted in some stakes racing. And we can take a little look back at uh, Group 3. It was Race 7 on their car, the JPAC Holmes Manawatu Breeders Stakes over the 2000. Electria runs on Cinerama and Lana Cord to the outside. Charm Star, 300 metres to go in front. By a length and a half, old two now. Sam I Am Susi is trying really hard. Cinerama and Electria coming through over on the inside. And then Lana Cord, it is Charm Star in front of them.
the breeders. Cinerama's going to dash it over on the inside, down towards the line. Charm Star. Charm Star has got it for the local lady, Lisa Ladder and Billy Pinnacle. At a first glance, Michael, I just thought Cinerama was home. And then Charm Star's just uh, kept on finding and been able to get up and win. That was uh, Wurumu Pin combining with Lisa Ladder. And I know Lisa was really confident that this horse was going to run a big race. And so important to have got that stakes win because she's been so well performed when you, you look back at the, the resume of course second in a group one New Zealand Oaks second in a Queensland Oaks uh, third in the group two the Roses uh, so yeah she's promised everything and finally got the, the group three win uh, yeah, I swore Cinerama was home watching <laughs> this live I was like well, yeah oh. <laughs> not that I backed it, I thought it would win and I wanted it to win. But Charm Star's probably an underrated horse. As you said, comes into the Oaks last year behind Amarillinia. Went to Queensland, did a job there. Um, that was very brave because she hit the lead a, a long way from home. And um, Wurumu, as he did with Mascarpone at Otaki about a month and a half ago, let it roll further out in the track to find the better ground. Mm. I thought a really brave performance. We've mentioned a couple of horses on the show who might be hard to find the right races for coming up. Well, she won't be hard to find at all. No. Mia's races, she could, not that it probably will, but she could go to a Tarapa this week for I a think group Travis one. Is, yeah, Travis Stakes. Yeah, Travis Stakes in 2000s, the more likely one there. So she, she's got lots of options because clearly she can handle the wet track. And you wouldn't be scared to say, well, Let's send her back to Walla. Let's go to Queensland. Let's mm. roll the dice at some of those Mears type races over there. But we'll talk a little bit later in segment three about who is going to go to Australia and and what we're going to do with all these horses now. Ian, because I think there's a lot of Kiwis looking forward to Queensland after a, a relatively fruitless, albeit by small numbers, Sydney. Yeah, but it's um, you've got to go, haven't you? Because we're seeing week in, week out that uh, horses can deliver the results at all levels. So I think you've got to be in to win and people also, are realising that. Well, I think also we're seeing that, that Australian black types are worth so much to these mm. mares, particularly with the mares, or a horse like Sword of State, who's obviously a colt, heading to start it. If you can get that Australian black type, you're, you're opening you're yourself up, to a, you? another market, yeah. aren't you? So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she popped back over the Tasman and she... she was good enough there last year to suggest she may not win again a Doombin Cup type race, which a Coventina Bay will go to. But there's a lot of races in Queensland for a horse like her. So, yep, I thought that was very, very brave. Cinerama, I would suggest, would head to the Travis, and then um, Alan Sherrick has suggested she'll be off to the Stallion next year. Very good, very good stuff. Well, that wraps up our domestic action here on uh, Weigh In. We'll be back after the break with more. We get you across the ditch to Randwick. by our stable of sponsors. Well, how's this for a blow dry? This is the length that uh, the ATC went to on Saturday to ensure the track was in good condition. They had the helicopter out drying the track. <laughs> well, Eve, this isn't the first time I've seen this. No, they, they, me either. They used to do it at Kamara. I know that sounds ridiculous, but there's Kamara, a lot of... Kamara, this is where this started, was it? Well, that, that's, that's, that's where they, they have a lot of helicopters there for, of all things, deer retrieval. So I've seen it used down the coast where I'm from a few times. A, because it's very wet, and B, because there's lots of people with helicopters. But I think the people in Sydney thought it was a bit more radical. I um, spoke to Nassim Dilmi from Godolphin on the uh, Thursday prior to the Saturday, and he was saying we'll be really lucky to even have a race meeting. There's just It's just rained so much. And the, the Andrew Bensley, I think, posted a, a picture of the 1,000-metre shoot. It was just underwater. I, I mean, I was, how they got a meeting underway, I it's have a no idea. I was there on Wednesday. There was 156 mils of rain between Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and I'm from Greymouth where it rains a lot and I was like wow this is incredible like that's six inches of rain yeah in 24 hours yeah and uh look it 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 didn't change all the racing but it changed one race a lot more than the others and this is one of the most radical things I've seen in a major race ever M and I loved it and the good news is after we show it we get to get talk to the man who pulled the magical stroke off. Yeah, let's have a little look at Think It Over winning the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. Keep an eye on the outside rail. 
Adam Zaki still in front. Think it over's coming to the stand rail. This is interesting. Zaki in front. Think it over coming down the outside fence. And they're well clear from the arrivals at the moment. I'm Thunderstruck Mount Popper making ground. Zaki in front. Think it over. Can Nash get it home? He's coming right down the outside. Zaki in front. Think it over. Down the stands rail. Lunges. Gets up. Think it over. What a ride, Nash Willa In spectacular style. Wins the Queen. Absolutely insane scenes coming in from the Queen Elizabeth. Uh, it's worth so much money, the Queen Elizabeth. And uh, Think It Over, of course, wasn't one of the well-fancied con uh, contenders and well-publicised that uh, didn't, didn't know if it would handle the off-track or didn't think it would handle the off-track. But some uh, really daring tactics there by Nash Rawler, who joins us on the phone. An absolute pleasure to have you with us, Nash. Has it all sunk in? You must be so satisfied that uh, the plan came off. Yeah, thanks so much, Emma. It was uh, pretty exciting stuff, obviously. And, um, yeah, look at you. He's, a, he's a, just a ripper horse. And, um, you know, obviously he got out to probably silly odds in hindsight Saturday because of the conditions. He'd had sort of four or five runs and a heavy... And never been able to sort of perform at his best before. But, um, yeah, I, I just think it was one of those tracks Saturday that... It, Bought them all under, and sort of none, none of the horses were really at home in it. And um, thankfully, uh, he was able to sort of um, pull out something special to win the race. Nash, talk me through the decision because uh, had you walked the track earlier in the day and, and gone to the outside specifically with that in mind, or had you cantered down there on the way to the start and just come up with the idea late? Talk me through the decision. Yeah, uh, look, just a couple of times. Um, you know, cantering to the barriers and, and actually what sort of really put it into the back of my mind was um, trotting down the outside there on the, on the pony, uh, getting led by the pony in the race before and I, I was actually just sort of spoke to the clerk of the course about it. I thought, gee, feels a lot better out here and, um, and they've been driving the trackers with the barriers on it and so forth um, during the day down that outside rail and Oh, oh, thankfully, I was sort of able to, to get on those tyre tracks and, um, you know, obviously that just firmed it up with that traction for us. But um, really, the decision to do it was made, as you can see, when I sort of straightened up and I, I just felt where we at, where we ended up was probably the worst part of the track. And I just felt I had nothing to lose. It was um, the only shot to win the race. Nash, congratulations on the big win. Did you mention to trainer Kerry Parker before the race that you were even considering that? No, uh, definitely not. No, um, I think um, you, you, you say you're going to do something like that and you end up stuck inside one and the next minute you can't do it. And, uh, it just complicates things. It's, it's, uh, but honestly, it was in the back of my mind... And I wasn't even thinking of it before I straightened up, you know, at the 500. It, it, it was just a split-second decision I made at the, at the 400 metre mark when, when, I, when I started to go out. Now, she's a remarkably improved horse. Some people would say alongside Shelby 66, the most improved horse in New South Wales. Does he give you the feeling he's a genuine Cox Plate horse because he was good enough in Melbourne in the Australian Cup? Yeah, yeah, look, he... Yeah, look, he has. Uh, he's, he's a horse that's just been um, probably placed so beautifully, but also every preparation he's just been able to find an extra length and, and keep raising the bar. And um, I, I think in the spring he got so much confidence out of winning those sort of restricted type races, you know, without going to the state to cost plate last year. And... and and, um, you know, like, you know, he came back and won the Apollo there and was just scintillating. It was an amazing win in the Apollo first up. And I, I sort of thought to myself, I've got the best horse in Australia here. And um, and he just hit those couple of wet tracks and the form sort of wasn't quite as good. But, uh, look, thankfully, you know, Kerry is stuck solid, stuck, stuck with his guns. You know, Saturday was always his grand final and um, you got him peaking on the day and... And the horse just done a marvellous job.
Now, she made herself very popular in New Zealand on Saturday by riding Kinlock to wins for some big-time New Zealand connections, the Batangia, Bruce Perry, of course, the Chittics. Um, this is a pretty nice horse. Obviously, gelding has been the making of him, and do you think he can go on with the job? Because this is a $500,000 race you're winning here. Yeah. Look, I told him um, uh, early in his prep, you know, before he obviously he raced first up and, and, and won. But um, he is a really nice horse. He, he's, he's got a bit of scope. And look, as a, as a before he was golden, he just wasn't 100 percent genuine. You know, he, he, he was showing the ability, but not really bringing to the races. And obviously, Van Gelder has just got his mind a bit more on the job. And um, you know, like he, you know, he was sort of a, one of those longer shots of Chris Lee's team, but, um, you know, confident, you know, he'd run very well. He, he, there wasn't much between him and, the, and his stable mate. Nash, the last 18 months have been outstanding for you. You're striking at about 20% New South Wales wide, which is only just behind J Mac and makes you one of the leading jockeys in the state. I, I you feel like you're seeing them well because. You seem to be riding particularly well on the bigger days. Yeah, well, I, I do. I, I feel like, um, I guess, uh, I haven't really had a stable backing like I generally have in the past. So I've just had a couple of smaller stables that actually supported me and kept me, uh, kept me riding a little bit of track work, which you know gives you a reason to sort of get out of bed and. Um, you know, um, yeah, look, you sort of got to work hard off the rides, but it, look, just having those couple of good horses in Eduardo and, and think it over, it's, it's amazing the difference it makes, you know, um, that sort of attracts attention and, 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 and you get better quality rides because of that. Nash, from everyone in New Zealand, a huge congratulations for what you achieved over the weekend and uh, just uh, stunning stuff in the Queen Elizabeth. Well done to you and thanks so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks, Emily. No, always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Wasn't that remarkable? It was just, oh, just oh, insane. I, My I, mouth was open for probably a good five seconds I thought it had run off at one stage. I thought, yeah. no, he's doing this on purpose. It was... I think it's one of those moments in racing which will still be iconic in yeah. 10 years' time. It's when you realise what he's doing and then you realise that he could pull it off. Yeah. I think that was the two, yeah. well, the two And, and two as, as we all know from Sh from Shane Dye with Fiend across back when you were probably a baby in the Caulfield Cup, if it goes badly wrong, you get totally and utterly slagged by people. Yeah. So, and, and it's such a great field. Um, Zaki, really oh, good. Oh, God, I felt for Jamie Carr. She would have thought well, she was She home. started going out the same yeah. way. I think, and I think I think she realises if she'd done the same thing, she would have won. But, yeah. but she was in front, so... He's a marvellous horse, isn't he? Oh, really? he's a wonderful horse. Yeah. What did you make of Very Elegant? I don't know if she was entirely comfortable. She came around the bend on the wrong leg and... God, you know she's trying her best because she that's all she does is try her best. She was, it was really good late, but I, I thought I thought it'd be really hard to take her to Paris on that. Mm. Because it's an awfully long way to go for yeah. and it's an incredibly expensive trip. I'd say she, she comes in and wins that, you go to Paris because you've got course, nothing left to prove. Yeah. But uh, there's not many other chances for her to not say prove herself because she doesn't need to prove anything, but to show she's in the right form to mm. go to Paris. I know it's in October, it's a long way away, but you've got to start planning it so early. So I just get the feeling that might be, might be enough to yeah. put the kibosh on that trip. Because they, if they leave her closer to home and she doesn't come up in August or September, they can let her down and still serve her. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Whereas I suppose technically they could in Paris too, but you can't go all that way and not start. No. So yeah. um, just I, the I, I doubt she'll Cup, be I think, is probably she's still paying the effects of yeah. the Melbourne Cup, which is so often the case, isn't it? With well, the... when she got beat by Montefilli at the start before, I know Montefilli was really good, but she was still not making any ground in the last 200. Mm. So... I, I know she, she's got nothing left to prove. She won the Melbourne Cup. She won everything. She won a Caulfield Cup. It's not, by no means picking on her. I just thought when she, she's so good, when she doesn't run on the money at that distance, you're like, well, that wasn't the best version of her. But, but as Nash said... I think said, as a fan, you just want to see yeah. her do her best. Uh, well, yeah. and, and also we're all fans of Wallers and J-Max, and she's got lots of New Zealand connections. I think the other thing too is, as Nash said, I don't think any of the horses handled that track. Yeah, true. It was just yeah. a case of who handled it the least 
worst. Yeah. Was was it was yeah, you know, who who didn't handle it the most was mm -hmm. probably the best way to put it. So um look a fascinating race. Um Great, to, great, great, talking. great, great yeah. to have Nash on to talk about it too, so we really appreciate that. He works so hard, Nash too. We were up in Hong Kong with him and he's just so determined and, and uh, really yeah, doesn't know when to lie down, so really glad to see him doing so well back in Sydney. Let's get along to the Sydney Cup and it was one for the girls. Rachel King successful aboard Knight's Order. Stockman's a long way back with Crystal Pegasus. 300 metres to run. Knight's Order has gone for home. Two lengths clear. Shiraz sticks to the task. It's Knight's Order. Two lengths clear from Shiraz. They're the only two chances, but Knight's Order brave in the lead. Rachel King rides him right out. Knight's Order holding Shiraz. Dash and Sweet Junior goes to third, but Knight's Order will lead all the way in the Sydney Cup. Beat Shiraz given every chance. Dash and Sweet Junior a distance. He'd previously won over this distance, but actually up in uh, Queensland. He was just too tough out in front. He just kept on bowling along. And it, as I said uh, before we watched the replay, one for the girls because Rachel King, the first female to ever win the Sydney Cup and a great to stuff to see. In 160 years, that's a long time. Mm. Um, great ride. A typical gay Waterhouse now, Adrian Bot type horse. Get to the front, just keep going even Rock time. hard fit. Do your yeah. best and if they can catch you, they can't. And I spoke to Chris Waller about the race on Saturday morning. He said, we've got no idea who's going to handle it. We just don't know. Mm. And clearly the horse who didn't handle it from our point of view is the chosen one. He just clearly just, it just wasn't his day. So yep. he finished second last. So I presume now he'll be retired. He was going to be, they discussed potentially Queensland, but I don't think they could take him on that. Um, this horse is a remarkable story. He actually purchased for 6,000 guineas, which is more or less a pound, when he was a yearling, then resold at the Tats Horses and Training Sale for 250,000 guineas, which is about 500,000 New Zealand dollars. And you think, well, it sounds like a lot of money, but, but it's not for these type of horses. He, he came out to Australia, ran 19th in the Melbourne Cup, but on a dry track, very elegant Melbourne Cup, clearly a different horse on a wet track. Yeah. Absolutely, like it just ploughs through that, yeah. loves it. Looks and like as a Gay said, type is too. He looks like a lovely. Oh, just so you think it, who had a remarkable oh, yeah. day because they're such Can't good looking. Not horses. mention that exactly. Or, yeah. or you're about to see plenty more of him because uh, he won three Group Ones back to back to back. Um, obviously, think it over being the second of those. But if it's a wet track, he's a chance in anything. Mm. Caulfield Cups, Melbourne Cups, on a dry track, he's probably a chance of nothing. You just don't get those wet tracks. In no, Melbourne, you don't get not do that you? wet. Not like that. No. no. Um, the chosen one. Look, not the ideal way to go out, but he, he was beaten a long way from home. Clearly, he maybe might not have liked the track either. Exactly. Yeah. He just didn't look at happy. And he, he, again, a horse has got nothing to prove. So uh, I, I presume he'll be retired. Andrew was telling me last week they are looking to retire him after this race. OK. Unless they go to the Q22 in Brisbane, but I imagine he'd be pretty tired after that. Yeah. Well, the Australian Oaks was uh, also one of the features on the day two of the championships. Now, Patroness caused a real surprise when getting up to score for Danny O'Brien and Damien Lane. Runs three lengths clear from Hinge, and Honey Creeper gives away a big start as El Patroness at the 200 beat off Jim Martini. Gypsy Goddess is just grinding away. El Patroness going boldly with 100 metres to run. El Patroness extending the lead on Gypsy Goddess, and here's a big win in the Australian Oaks for El Patroness for. Damien Lane won it easily from Gypsy Goddess. Jim Martini third, Hinge fourth, followed by Biscayne Bay, then Honey Creek. Uh, Seamus Award is a sire I've had my eyes on for a long time. He can produce a stayer, and El Patroness is just one of those. They just keep on giving and giving right to the line, and that's what El Patroness did, and um, really just uh, springboarded into the race and, and was able to keep on giving. Had a hell of a season. Of course, he had incentivised who won the Caulfield Cup, which seems like about 10 years ago now. Do is by Yeah, Seamus do by Seamus, yep. Seamus Award. Um, <laughs> also, when you, when you look at Danny O'Brien's body of work in major Australian staying races, obviously Danny trained a Melbourne Cup winner. Yep, he's trained uh, a VRC Oaks winner, and now he's trained an ATC Oaks winner. Yeah. That's a huge body of work, like, for an Australian trainer, because that's not what they tend to specialise in. His niche. Yeah, he's, 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 <laughs> he's really found his, his mark with those. Um, lovely ride by Damien. Kiwi bred horses second and third. I thought the Tarzino filly gypsy goddess was, was really, really good in second. Yeah. But I think anything we see in this next little segment or we've seen previous to this on that track, M, you can be really happy for those who win, but you can forgive anybody who's <laughs> in behind. It and move well, on. It's just yep. so heavy. I was talking to J Mac about it. He said, it's just so heavy. He said, horses get to the 600 and just exhale and go, Ugh, yeah, because they're tight. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, not sure what to make of it heading forward. Sometimes you think an Oaks winner will go on to be a Caulfield Cup horse. 
I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Watch the space, maybe. That's uh, more, all we can say. Let's get you along to the Queen of the Turf. This was another rough result for punters. Nimalee, the winner of this one. Ludice Bath. Colette's dropped out to last coming up the rise. Ana Vista running about under pressure. And Nimalee's coming off to throw down the challenge. And Nimalee draws level with Ana Vista. Two lengths clear from Vangelic. Then came Ice Bath running on well. It's Nimalee getting the upper hand from Ana Vista. Three lengths to Ice Bath. But Nimalee is starting to extend clear with the Queen of the Turf. And Nimalee gets a quick one today. Goes on to beat Ana Vista. Ice Bath third. Followed in by Yonce. A gap back to promise of success from Vangelic never being kissed. A gap to Steinem. Not the winner that anybody expected, but it was some Damien Oliver Gold aboard Nimalee who got up to score. And I think he was the real talking point from the race. And um, now, obviously, turning 50 in June. He's 49 at the moment. He surpassed uh, George Moore's record of Group 1 wins. And, God, he's been an icon, hasn't he, of Australasian racing? Oh, 127 Group 1. So it's 123 in Australia and four here in New Zealand. And of course, the remarkable story of when he rode Media Puzzle to win the Melbourne Cup just mm. days after his brother passed away. Look, that's folklore movie stuff. And yet here he is, he's 49, heading to 50, which is still very young when you're my age. But it's, he just... <laughs> a little he's, over 50, aren't you, Michael? <laughs> he's, he's, at least I don't watch maths. But <laughs> he's still the same person. He's the same, he, he's just as buoyant uh, and just as driven in a, in a tight mm. finish in a, in a Fifty thousand dollar race at Sandown. He just Ollie. He just hasn't changed much at all in twenty five years of being professional and mentally rock hard at the top level. He's very yeah. good to deal with in the media. Uh, he's just a professional round owners and stuff. But gee, that's a lot of wins. And the question is, I suppose, a mate of ours. Do you reckon James McDonald will beat that record? Gosh, the way he's going, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I suppose it, like, like Just the longevity of he, your career. You yeah, can't exactly. control injuries or, you know, God forbid, something like Stay, that. Stay, keep your weight down yep. for another 15 I've, years. I've got a um, quiz for you, actually, oh. Michael. I have to put you on the spot. Oh, this would be good. I've got... Uh, Is it a maths quiz? Uh, no, it's not a maths oh, quiz. Good. I know you wouldn't do very well in that. Yeah. Uh, Damien Oliver, four group ones in New Zealand. Yeah. Can you name the races they were? Oh, or God. what horses? No, just, can I phone a friend? Can I phone Aidan Rodley? I do have them on my phone. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> um, Some little work I did earlier. Go on, if you can give me one, I'll be happy. Uh, well, he would have won a railway. Nope. Damn! What's he won? New Zealand, uh, we've got a New Zealand derby aboard So Casual. God, An Auckland time. Cup. Zavite or Zavite is a beat. Yeah. Wellington Cup aboard Ed and a Zabil Classic on Zonda. He won a Wellington Cup on Ed. Apparently. That's Apparently. what Wikipedia told me. So if I'm well, incorrect, please <laughs> write into the did, shop did, did and he you can amend it. Too? That's not a great one, but he did want to crack a million as well. Well, that was one one. I don't know. Just, I've just, no, it's not I just I'm not saying it's not a group, group one, but, it, but yeah. That's your quiz of the week. It's, um, that's good. I, I reckon J Mac's got a shot at it, but man, that's a lot of a lot of wins between where J Mac is now and that. Yeah. So just got to show you what an incredible. And of course, he's not finished. He's not finished. No, Maybe. I know. He doesn't look, make any it, noises about being finished. Is it possible either? we could get to 150? God which imagine. sounds ridiculous, yeah. but it's only 23 away. That's six a year for four more years. God. That's yeah. incredible. Okay. Would be incredible. Yeah. Watch this space again. That's all we keep saying on the show. Another break here on Way and on the back of that, we get into the more light hearted end of the show. by our stable of sponsors. Congratulations, Scout. This is your second Dunstan X Factor win. Can you talk us through your classes this year? Um, so this year I was entered in the pace and manner, the dressage and show jumping. I was lucky enough to place first in the pace and mannered and second in dressage and show jumping. So this is Marty, Marty McFly. He's probably one of my favourite horses we've got at the moment. And my other one was Blueberry. He's a little four-year-old. Wasn't expecting much because he's only young, but very lucky to be placed in the top six. Marty will be hopefully one of my top eventers. 
He's just definitely got the mindset and brain to do it. Uh, blueberry, see where that goes. He might be for sale soon, but hopefully he can be cool at eventing too. Marty raced in Hong Kong. He was originally la named Legendary Hero. Uh, he was not very successful, so lucky enough he's good here. He's good at what he does now. Mum actually found him when she was down in Taupo with Gina at a race, like racehorse retraining clinic. Mum saw him and thought she, he was quite cool. I've been riding since probably before I could walk. Mum's always been doing it, so kind of got introduced straight away. Uh, I love eventing, it's my main, my main passion. And currently I've got a few horses running at two star level, so quite lucky enough to do that. All of my horses are thoroughbreds. I don't have any other breed of horses. They're my favorite. They're so trainable, like they, they just try and learn in everything you're trying to tell them. And they're so much easier than all the warm bloods to get fit. Like you can come out to an event without training heaps and they're fit enough and ready to go. Great stuff, and uh, I think Michael Scout Lot is the name we're going to be hearing a lot of what in the a future. Cool young she's, lady. Uh, yeah, she's really remarkable. She had obviously two in that competition, finished in the top six. She won it last year. She beat her mum. Mum finished in second. She won it. She's only 15, so um, yeah, really good stuff. And obviously, a huge nod to uh, Gina Schick and uh, just what they do there with um, that competition and the, the emphasis that they put on. Well, you can um, see the how mature scouters, like, and, and yeah. I think that's one thing I've learned from, from in the harness racing with the kids' cars is the youngsters having made to look after their own horses that really makes them quite mature. And obviously Scout's only 15, so that was a great example of that. And that's why I think we should investigate the possibility of having the pony tr um, gallops races Absolutely. in New Zealand. Absolutely. That's would love how it. I started. Well, I started honestly, pony They have them in Australia. They've been huge. Yep. Why don't we investigate having them? Imagine having that at Ellerslie, first meeting back, or Pukekohe for Karaka Million next year. Ten ponies, some kids who have been taught to ride, been fantastic, and I've seen it with the harness racing, with the kids' carts. It's a great way for people like Zach Butcher to end up getting their start in racing. In um, the UK, when I started, first year it was all, you know, sort of um, wearing normal yeah. equestrian gear. Second year round, everybody had a racing saddle. We all had ponies were in training. And I can imagine <laughs> we had the how. Full gear I can imagine on. what it was, you were like. Yeah, it got quite serious. It was good fun though. So it's such a great way to start. As should we have them? Said. Should we have them here? What was that? Pony races. Should we have them here? Absolutely. Good. Yeah, okay. I I'm all for it. If you can get the health and safety all sorted and you do it properly, I think there's no reason why we shouldn't have it here. Sounds good to me. Let's get you along to Rotorua's big trial. There was a uh, pretty intense trial with some top-line performers. Have a little look at uh, this. This is the open catchweight trial at Rotorua in the soft conditions over the 1,050. Let's Be Glam was the eventual winner, but you want to keep an eye out for Levante there closing it off. And uh, there's some exciting horses heading forward, Michael. Well, let's be Glam ran sixth in the, the Blue Diamond, so she's going to be a great addition to New Zealand racing now with Lance Noble. Levante was excellent. She heads to Tarapa this week, so really good there. Really strong. Uh, Entre Vier, again, excellent down the outside. So there are some of the big guns. Coventina Bay not giving her head and behind sort of state. They're all heading to Queensland. So we've had a situation in the last 12 months where we've lost our four highest rated horses. Mm. Avantage, Melody Bell, Probabil, and the chosen one, now all retired. Mm. So the question we thought we would try and answer is, who's the most likely New Zealand trained horse to win a Group 1 in Australia in the next 12 months? So ladies first, who did you come up with? Yep, well, I went for Levante as my horse. I thought that uh, run in the new market was sensational, and uh, I think that's a springboard for her to be able to do some great things. She can stick to the Phillies and Mares company. She can, yeah, go mix it with the big guns. M Melbourne or Sydney? I think Melbourne she could go or... either. She handles off track, so yeah. you've got options. Yeah. I, I, I think she showed she can, uh, well, in the new market, she could win a race. She can race at 1,600, couldn't she? So we know, we know she, can, she can win at the highest level at a whole range of distances, as you said, the Mares races. Here she is obviously beating um, Entre Vier um, and Mascarpone in, the, in a Group One, so look, I, I think they'll roll the dice with you. I'll be, I'll be really keen to take her back to Melbourne because mm. Sydney gets so wet these days. It does. I, um, I just think it was just the tonic that they needed. That trip over there to know that she travels well. It was an. Ex 
exploratory mission as such, wasn't it, the new market? And then it just showed what she could do. And yeah, I think she's. So she, she's, she's right our most likely it. New Zealand for me. one trained winner. For I, me. I, I, I what probably, about you? I probably agree with you, but I'll go La Creek, only because the La Creek who turned up in the Evandale Guineas was so good. And she is only four next season, so she has the options of not coming into handicaps at a big weight. Here she is in the trail in the Evandale Guineas. This clearly shows she can race up to 2,100 metres. She obviously, like Levante, has the option of Mia's races. Um, and she's only a baby. She's still very sound. She still has lots of things in her, in her side. So she even has a race like, you know, the Golden Eagle for the yeah, four-year-old. So yep. she has so many options and she can handle office tracks. So she's so electric. I, 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 think, yeah. I think she'll... And hope, I hope she can take that jump from three to three, four. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Uh, I, I think she's a great chance. And then we have backup from horses who may not compete at Group 1, but Entre Vier, uh, Coventina Bay will compete at Group 1's sort of status heading to Queensland. They were all in that trial. So while we've lost a lot of big guns here, we've got some serious horses. And I think the Queensland Carnival is going to be really cool for people watching at home in New Zealand at a time when it's a bit quieter here because... We're going to have some big-name horses in play. We sure are. Mm -hmm. Yep, we most definitely are. Michael rudely interrupted before this segment. Sorry. And the uh, team behind the scenes had worked really hard to put together a little uh, teaser for our segment. It's at the wrong end of the oh. segment, but have a little look at this. <laughs> That's a perfect example of why Michael should exactly. read his script, maybe. Yeah. I was at Dr. Curry reckon? this morning, I didn't see the script. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, thank but you. But I did some but research for the next part, which is really cool. Good. The Grand National story. Oh, unbelievable, This is the coolest story it? of the week. Yeah, unbelievable You would stuff. love this being one of those English people. One of those English people, that's yes. me. Let's have a look at the Grand National, one of the most iconic races on the calendar in the UK. Noble Yates, here it is, winning the Grand National length tree. 6,910 metres. Noble Yates in second, Delta Work is back in third, then Longhouse Poets and Santini and Fiddler on the roof, clear from freewheeling Dylan, they're approaching the elbow and it's Noble Yates who's through to the inside now to lead from any second now who's battling away all the way to the line, Noble Yates in front by length over any second now, it's Noble Yates under Sam Welly going, a fairy tale end to his career, Noble Yates has won the national has beaten any second now. Delta work was home in third. Fourth across the line, Santini. Fifth the I just can't emphasise enough how much you should put this on the bucket list. It is incredible. How many it... times have you been? Never. Oh, well, that's OK. <laughs> well, what are you... well, I've watched it on... I know well, I should since, have lied. Since you're not going to the arc now because of really elegant, maybe you can go to this. Um, honestly, though, it's the one race of the year where your office has a... You know, it's like the Melbourne Cup, but yeah. in England. It's just, there's just such a, a great atmosphere uh, around it. And the stories that come, the jumps are enormous. What about this dude? Enormous. This I is know. almost the story of the year. Sam, Sam Wally Cohen. Cohen. Last ride before Last he retired? Ride. Retires on Thursday, says I'm retiring after the Grand National. He's 39, and he is the head of a company which is worth £200 million. So he's a jockey for fun, just for fun. And for fun, he won the Grand National. Just a remarkable story. He's had a great career. He's won a gold cup. He yeah. really has competed at the and top his, level. And his family bought this horse in March. So, and, and it's the first seven-year-old to win the Grand National in 40 years. Yeah. Just an amazing story. There's information, I just go to um, one of the websites in England. There's just so many of them, and he is all over them. And he's a good-looking dude. I hate him. I hate the guy. He's just got so much going for him. Um, Love how Michael drops that in good-looking dude, well, too. Is. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Let's let's go. Let's leave. Let's wrap up another way in before it all goes downhill from here. That's it from us. We'll be back next week. Group One Racing.